Hello everyone, as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, as I hover over the Eastern Front as Supreme Axis Commander, uh, with just a click of a mouse button moving divisions to and fro. Here we are, be gone, any streaming problems. We're having too good of a time on this one. Uh, lots of great chat, lots of people adding uh, good historical information. I like all of that. Last time we moved Ninth Army. Uh, Ninth Army made very good progress. As a matter of fact, I find generally so far that we are making better progress than I do in War in the East 1, uh, so far. So far, we'll see how it goes. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself. That's for sure. Now, this armored unit is usually a problem. We'll have to get out and take care of that. One thing that we did here, and I'll kind of zoom in a little bit, is um, where is this core? There it is. This is 42nd Corps. It is under the command of Walter Kunza, I assume. He's a four-five-six-five. Well, he's terrible. Uh, let's get rid of him. What? Well, I can't. Uh, I've only. It takes ten to replace. We've got eight APs left. We've already put modal into the north. That costs most of our APs this turn. We will get rid of Kunsa. Now, luckily, that didn't affect anything because they didn't really fight anybody. They tried to pick off this unit a little bit, but this unit's now going to be isolated. This Soviet unit right here, uh, as you can see. Seven is the penalty to move through that, <laughs> get out of that hex now because there's been there's a lot of wreckage in that hex. Um, so yeah, we moved this unit up here, and this is a very interesting unit, 42nd Corps. And maybe this is a decent time. I, I, I said earlier in the previous stream that I like to take the first five or ten minutes and just talk about a big general concept, and then we get into the gameplay and go at it. Uh, but, you know, this is a new game. For some people, it's a brand new game, right? They never played War in the East. Uh, if that's you, I just like to talk about bigger general concepts. Now, I'm trying to focus mainly on things that even a War in the East one player would find interesting or new or how the game has changed maybe a little bit, something like that but this time i wanted to just talk about general strategy and what brought this up is me looking at this 40 let's look at it again 42nd core and in war in the east one this core was attached to the ninth army so all of these units were green they were part of the of the ninth and that was fine. And we may still use them in conjunction with the ninth, but the fact that they weren't directly attached this time got me thinking about the best way to use them and where do we need them. Um, so let's back up. Let's get full zoom out. Well, maybe one. Let's go in one. Let's go in one. Okay. So what are we trying to do here? And that will maybe give us an idea of what we should do with those units. Well, in the north, we are trying to push 18th Army directly north up to these lakes. This is Lake Pipas, and I forget the name of the other one. Now I want to know, but I'm not going to go look. Uh, we're trying to push 18th Army, so this purple army here. We're trying to drive them north and around the north part of these twin lakes okay it's not good terrain in this area we want to go north now this isn't great terrain either we've got to go over a swamp uh, but you want to bring them in from the west 16th army which is in the pink uh not that pink this neon pink is the panzer group 16th army here is the other part of Army Group North. What are we going to do with them? Well, initially we drive them east to take Conus uh, in this area right here. And now next turn we'll start to vector them north. Uh, one of the reasons I like to get across the river, establish this bridgehead here, is we will eventually move 16th Army across this bridgehead and further up into the Baltics here. They will be the ones that come up here generally and take Peskov. Now, 18th will help with that, 
but generally they'll take Peskov. But you're going to start getting Soviet reinforcements coming in like mad from the east. And so they're going to set up a line here and gradually work those Soviet re reinforcements down, grind them down, and then move up to Leningrad as well. And so they kind of meet in the middle, and then we push into Leningrad with the infantry. You do not want to be attacking into urban areas with your panzer group. So what do we do with this panzer group? Well, this panzer group goes this way, and it goes this way. They meet around Peskov, right? Now, normally, and probably in this game, we're going to try to trap all of these troops if we can. They generally will fall back to this river line, and we'll try to trap them again. This terrain up here is not great for panzers. Uh, it's not great for any motorized units. There's lots of woods. There's uh, deep woods or, or heavy woods. There's a lot of marsh area that you see. Uh, all in all, it's terrible to be operating uh, motorized divisions up there. So we will lead the way to Leningrad, carving things up. Then we'll reverse out of there and we'll either go around here and try to cut off supply coming into Leningrad across Lake Ladoga. Or we will head directly east and come down and try to participate in the encirclement of Moscow. All right. That's basic strategy. Gosh, my steam keeps coming up there. That's basic strategy for 4th Panzer, 18th Army, 16th Army. What do we do in the center? So what are we doing here? And I'll leave the south until we get down to the south, but we're into the center now. And why am I moving these units north? Why am I uh, taking this 20 or 42nd Corps that's not attached to anything? Why am I moving it north? Well, eventually you kind of have a gap in your line. Once we get past uh, Smolensk, You see Smolensk there. Once we get past Smolensk, you have these two rivers that come up here. This is the Dnieper, the smaller version of it, once we get up here. And uh, I forget the name of this river. I just don't have it on the top of my head. Usually you, pa you drive 2nd Panzer right through these two rivers and towards Moscow. So you're going to go straight through here towards Moscow. All right. 3rd Panzer which is here, generally goes a little further north and then this way and meets up with 2nd Panzer, and that's the spear that we're going to use to get towards Moscow. Now, again, I use my motorized divisions, my Panzer divisions, and the straight-up motorized divisions more like cavalry to get around the edges and do encirclements, but once you get up near Moscow, they're going to have to do some fighting as well. Okay, so what does that mean? This unit, this 42nd here, as we get back up here north of Smolensk and towards the north, this area right here is ripe for counterattack. Why is that? Because you're bringing 16th Army, but they have got to go help take Leningrad. And so you've got nothing out here. And I think what I'll use is this core to come up here and push a little east so that 9th Army in the green can continue pushing straight at Moscow. And 4th Army, which many times you have to bring a little uh, further to the south, this 9th Army will actually vector it directly northeast towards Moscow. These guys a little north of them, these guys a little south in the center, but all of it directed right towards Moscow. Uh, and that's generally how I do it, how I play it. Uh, we'll see how the game plays out. You need to be probing all the time uh, to figure out where your panzers can move through. Uh, they will be the spearhead eventually, but you want to be probing up and down rivers. You never want to attack across the river uh, with your motorized groups. Uh, you really don't want to do it with your infantry either, but uh, you know you kind of got to do what you got to do sometimes. Uh, and so that is the general strategy in the north and in the center. Uh, the Soviet Union has grown. Stand I just noticed that. Am I the only one? Uh, am I the only one that noticed that? I guess not. Stanley noticed it. It seems like Moscow is further back, right? Am I crazy about that? 
um, it seems like everything has shifted a bit to the north. Um, and Moscow has gotten a little far. Sorry, the scroll. I should speed the scroll up. Smolensk seems further north. And, and again, this may just be the fact that they looked, you know, now and tried to get the curvature of the earth correct. It used to be Moscow was here, right? I, I, I don't think I'm crazy. I think it's further north now and further back from Smolensk. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to go back and look at War in the East 1 now. But I guarantee you that 4th Panzer was north of where Moscow was on the map previously after turn one. Uh, that actually is more challenging. I was looking at this, I'm like, damn, that's a long ways from Smolensk. I think it used to be like, well, actually like here, uh, but I think they moved it. Okay. Um... They did reorient the map. I knew it, Rocka Soccer. You're always good for that info. Thank you much. Uh, yes, they did reorient it. Okay, I'm being told. Also, uh, Defender1971, welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, says that the full manual is now available on the Matrix website. Wonderful. I will say this. I'm going to have to reach out to them because I want that hardcover manual. Uh, I'm even willing just to pay for it without the game. Uh, so I'm going to have to reach out to them. Maybe I can twist an arm and say, hey, is there any way you got an extra one laying around the offices? <laughs> we'll, we'll see what kind of pull uh, <laughs> I can exert there. Uh, yeah, send me a free gift bag as well. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Blonde Prince says, are the distances still the same? It does not look that way to me. I don't know. Rocka Soccer is very good because he has read that website and really looked over all of the updates. Uh, so he's saying they did reorient it. Moscow is definitely further north. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And it looks another 10 hexes, seven or eight maybe, something like, something like that. Uh, it looks a little further to the east, so that's going to be challenging. And also, uh, Swag Squadron, thanks for the follow. I do appreciate it. Um, that's going to be a little more challenging because usually it's hard enough to get to Moscow as it is. Wow. I'm going to really, uh, maybe this is going to put us to a new challenge. Now, Rocka Soccer says it's 22 hexes from Smolensk to Moscow in number one. I can't wait for the update of what it is here. I guess we could go look ourselves. It looks more than 22. Is it more than 22? Well, you know what? I'm going to sit here and count them. That's OCD kicking in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 20. Yeah, it's like 27. Now, that's not exactly how the crow flies. I went a little north first. So maybe it's close, but it's reoriented for sure. Uh, Moscow now, what is that, longitude or latitude? I always get the two of them mixed up, uh, but it has moved north. How about that? That's one I do know, north, south, east, and west. Thank God I'm a country boy saying, what, John Denver? Um, anyway, <laughs> I just have to throw in an old man reference every once in a while. Humor me. Um, all right, let's get right down here in the center. Now, when I left you last time, I was talking about this motorized SS uh, brigade. I you and I mistakenly at the end of last episode kept saying they were attached to Army Group North. They are not. They're attached to Army Group Center. So apologies for that. Uh, they are attached to Army Group Center. This unit is perfect for sitting near Minsk. And as partisan units pop up on the map, they've got a lot of movement. They can go flying around. Now, partisan units, how does that work? Well, it spawns a counter that looks just like every other Soviet counter, but it says P on it. Uh, and they will try to get close to your rail lines. And when they get within one hex of your rail line, you can't move rail through there anymore. They've damaged it. Um, and so you've got to have a unit, some unit, maybe more than one unit. It could be a security unit if you prefer. You've got to have them go out into the countryside. All they have to do is get right next to the part. So if this was a partisan unit, if I get a unit right here, they, they're gone. 
they're gone. They're like ghosts. They vanish. Um, and so you've got to have something dedicated to doing that because as the game goes on, they spawn. And if you don't have... Uh, something that has a good range or good uh, movement points, good range to get out there and disperse them, they will wreak havoc with your rail lines. Now, again, we're going to get into the logistics more and more as we go on. At the end of turn one, I'm going to spend the first 15 or 20 minutes of an episode talking about depots. Uh, we'll talk about, well, they're talking about port supply in the chat. We'll talk about port. Uh, supply, railway supply. Railroads are still ultimately the most important thing. Getting the railroads repaired is mission number one. Speaking of which, we've got a railroad unit up here. Um, there it is. I do believe that we can go ahead and move that up here to start the rail. Now, one thing to keep in consideration here in this game is there is double rail. So you see the ribbon here, this kind of ribbon-like? That is double rail. This is single rail. So we need to find as much double rail as we can in to move uh, supply and fuel. So it looks like, and this is kind of the traditional way to go, is we need to come, well, where, oh, here. We need to come here, up through Conus up through Vilnius and this way. Now, I think traditionally I had always kind of gone here and then up, but I think that we should take advantage of double rail wherever we can. Uh, you know, I'm still figuring out exactly the advantages there and how much of a difference it makes, uh, but I think it, you know, it does make a difference. So we may as well take advantage of as much of it as we can. So we're going to put this right up on this double rail and we'll follow double rail as far as we can, as far as we can. Also, one advantage of uh, moving them north would be the Baltic rail zone. Uh, as you see here, it's only costing us one point if you get below the ball. Is, is the Baltic rail zone still a thing? I guess that's one thing I didn't look at. Uh, we're doing it for one up here, so I assume it is. The Baltic Rail Zone, I think, generally ends maybe down right in this area somewhere. Uh, but we're getting Baltic Rail rates here for the repair. So we're in the Baltic Rail Zone as far as I know. Uh, oh, now we're up to two. Interesting. Okay, um, that's something I want to figure out then. Uh, I'll, I'll go read about that. Uh, but... All I know generally, I want to be on double rail, and it's always an advantage the closer you are to what used to be the old Baltic rail zone, but it's not on the map anymore. But we were getting one repair point down here. Uh, interesting. Uh, we were definitely getting it up here. That's definitely in what used to be the old Baltic rail zone. I'll just have to go check that out. It's not something I thought to look at. I just kind of assumed it would be the same, I guess, maybe. All right, uh, as I like to do, let's go around here and make sure we don't have any attacks or movement points. Now, as you'll notice, I've kept the whole Panzer group sitting here. I move them last generally. Now, we've already moved 9th Army, so I guess we could go ahead and move the Panzers and the motorized now. Um, the This is the sticking point, this unit here. We need to blow that out of here with a straight-up motorized unit. Then we'll move the Panzers through. Now, I usually create kind of a fence around this area. Belarusia, you see here. Belarusia. Now, Belarusia, right? Um, I generally create a fence here. I say a fence, an encirclement here down to this area, and then 2nd Panzer comes up and closes that off. Now, I can see with the new terrain features, this is really bad terrain. I guess I hadn't realized before just how bad it was. You've got heavy force, you've got all kinds of swamp, right? We're just north of the Pripyat Marshes. These are the Pripyat Marshes here. It's essentially impassable. Um, and you see it, Pripyat Marsh here. This is kind of a no-go zone for the war. You, you know, you just kind of don't 
mess around in here. Now, the Soviets will have units out here sometimes. I call them desert rats. Or desert rats. Swamp rats. <laughs> desert rats. Swamp rats. Uh, because they will just pop out. You know, like like a rat popping out of your cupboard and all of a sudden cut a rail line. And so I usually have a security unit kind of go through here slowly and try to deal with that. Uh, but usually the Soviets don't keep anything here, really. This has also kind of been reoriented north. A lot of this has. And so... You know, last time I was looking around for Smolensk and I was, you know, it just threw me off because the map is definitely different. Uh, I like it. I like it. I guarantee you Kursk was much further south to the march marshes on the old map. So, you know, it's like the map's been turned like this. Uh, I don't know if the distances are, are different or about the same, but the map has definitely been reoriented. Um Download is available apparently at 11 GMT. Cool. Uh, so that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, says Steve. Okay, thanks, Steve. That's good information. Um, okay, Rocket Soccer, that's good. Hey, Face Star, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Uh, much appreciated. Um, I'm just reading some of your comments. You guys are great. Great comments. I always say I've got the best subs in the business, and I really believe that. I watch other streams and just see the comments, and I'm like, you know, I don't know. It looks like a bunch of 12-year-olds on there just doing emoticons. Uh, so I'm glad we don't have a whole lot of that. Uh, if Stanley gets on here, maybe we will. I kid, Stanley. I kid. Um, okay. Phase Star says, yeah, it's a brand new map based on a more accurate projection, according to the dev team. Well, it's definitely different. It's reoriented. Like I said, uh, well, that's backwards for you guys, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. Okay, I'm looking at myself on the stream. Back here by Moscow has been moved north. Uh, so it's kind of just been reoriented. It's going to be more challenging, I think. Um, kind of driving up this way. I kind of wish I would have noticed that before i don't think it's really going to change the strategy at all i always bring ninth army out to Connus, down to vilnius um this free agent army as i'll call them since they're directly attached to okh well they're not an army they're a core uh i'll bring up here to the same area uh but it, it's a little more challenging and i think the terrain is more challenging um smolensk seems a lot further away uh, <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I don't know. It seems a lot. Where is Minsk? Can I can I get a visual on Minsk? Well, first of all, hold on. Wow, that was a mess. All right. And they've also now got 6th Army directly right next door to 2nd Panzer. That's different. That used to be quite a bit down here. Um, cool. Hey, the more accuracy, the better, I say. Let's go find Minsk. Because Minsk is where you center yourself. Oh, it's just right here. Huh. Now that looks closer to me. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Hey, the more accurate, the better, I say. Uh, that's cool. Okay, now that I'm oriented a little bit, sorry for that detour. I just want to orient myself because it looks different to me. And I'm wondering if I'm doing the same thing I usually do. So usually third panzer, we're going to make maybe one encirclement here and then bring some of the others out here to right in front of Minsk. And then we bring second up here and we link up. And usually, usually, I'm not sure if we'll do it this time. I have an inner circle of uh, encirclement and I have an outer circle that goes right to the doorstep of Minsk. Now we have moved far enough. Hell, we may, able, may be able to get to Minsk. I could even move my uh, motorized the third panzer group right now if i wanted to because down here in the fourth they don't really affect where third panzer goes uh but i you know i have a way i always do these things i'm just going to keep on keep on keeping on as they say i do think i'll bring this motorized unit up here and just help clear out some of this stuff so it is attached to army group center sorry i misspoke when i said army group north at the end of last episode if that was confusing 
uh, I hate when I watch one back and I say, I keep saying Army Group North, and I'm like, no, you dummy, it's Army Group Center. Um, all right, we're just going to clear out this to the extent we can just to get some breathing room here. Now, that held. Ouch. We didn't lose much. Uh, a couple planes. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I was wondering, I, I personally had this question and I was like, you know, once you get past the air phase, everything shifts over to ground. Can you go look at the air? Yes, you can get your directives up here, right? And what I wanted to go look at specifically is the fact we seem to be absolutely bombing the crud out of their ground units. We're getting a lot of ground combat support um, from the air. And I was kind of curious about it. Now... Oh, it looks like you can't click on them, though. All right, hold on, hold on. Uh, Air Doctrine screen. Let's go to Luflata 2. Okay. Um, interdiction level is high for our ground attacks from Luflata 2. Now again, we didn't really go down into the other Luflatas and look at their air directives, all right? So this is just a very quick summary of your overall doctrine. It's not specific orders. This is just what uh, kind of a grand overview of when I say orders, I'm talking about air directives. Air directives are just like orders are to the army air directives are to the air force these are not the actual directives themselves now they correspond with the directives you can give and this is a very clear way of seeing what directives you can actually give air superiority recon ground attack bomb city ground support this is just a summary of the entire doctrine so it's all of your air directives thrown together and it tells you kind of what your overall doctrine is at, at Luflata 2. It'll tell you your aircraft numbers as well, who the commanding officer is. Um, but this, you can go look through this. Now, we can change this now. Why is that? Well, it's the only... Let's, see, let's make sure I say this correctly. Because we've also got Bomb City on here, and I'm a little confused by that. But generally speaking... Ground attack is the only air warfare that's going to take place during the ground movement phase. Now, you cannot go back in and give it new directives. You can't. We're, we're already past the air planning stage. You needed to plan this in phase two. Then we did phase three, which was the air resolution. Now we're on to phase four, which is the ground. But of course, ground attack can only happen during the ground warfare. And so the AI is still doing this based on your directives, but it does look like we could adjust the interdiction level, which is interesting to me. Um, and any of these things, I'm going to go back and look at that. I'm going to go back and look. It doesn't, it's not affecting how we're going to play the game here, uh, but I just did want to point that out. We are getting a lot of ground support and we've got GS on, just like the old game. You can see it right up here. This this button here, we could turn it off if we don't want any more ground support. Let's say that the Soviets are just tearing up our Air Force, and we say, okay, no more, no MAS. Let's uh, turn it off. But we want it on for now. We've got air superiority, whether we've given it a directive or not. We've just got it uh, in week one. So anyway, I wanted to point that out, that you can go look. At your directives, these are the actual directives, or a big grand summary of it all called your air doctrines. All right, um, back to fourth army. Kalo, what's going on? Kalo always with great comments on uh, the YouTube videos themselves down in the comments. Uh, good, I'm glad you made it live. Britt Torrent, hello Britt Torrent, Scott P., Right. Railroad repair does not depend on the terrain that you're repairing the railroad in. Correct. Now, I can only speak exactly about the old game, but it used to be if you were in the Baltic rail zone, so there was a box. Um, 
it was one point for hex, per hex, no matter the terrain. Now it does cost, you know, you get normal movement costs for that railroad unit, depending on the terrain when you move them. But the repair itself is constant, or that's how it used to be. I guess I haven't repaired enough railroad yet. Choo-choo! Uh, I have not done enough of that to say that definitively here. Still combing that rule book, my friends. Combing it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hey, thanks thanks to everyone for stopping by, by the way. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying these and maybe here and there picking up a nugget. Um, all right, we're back to this cavalry brigade that we're eventually going to put in Minsk and have a have them be our partisan uh, group that deals with the partisans. I'm attacking here again. I knew that I wouldn't get good odds. I'm just wearing it down, kind of because I just want to get it out of the way. Uh, we're not we're not losing much. Um, a plane here and there, but we're not really losing any men. With that done, I'm going to go ahead and go around that unit. We'll just isolate all these guys. He's now hooked up. You know, he can get. Uh, supply through here so that's fine uh, the security unit I'll leave right here both of these security all three of these security uh, they're not division well they form one division if you put them all together and you can also do that in this game just like you could the first one and we'll be doing that eventually but these security units right now are split into three you know two of three you could see well three of three one of three, two of three. You get the idea if you're looking at the counter up here. All right, let's go down here to these guys. Now, you always kind of have this question of uh, what exactly or how exactly do you approach this? We've got the big uh, fortress at Brest-Litovsk, and that is very difficult to break down generally. Now, this is a little bit different. You used to have a bunch of um, units right out in this area you could move up uh, for fourth army but now they're all on the front lines and I don't know if they went back to some historical reference and figured out you know these guys actually weren't three or four back I do see an independent unit here all right so this is a core it has part of second panzer underneath it but this is the 53rd core I'm going to swear this is new uh, this is Weisenberger. Yep, I've never heard. I've you later on you hear of Weisenberger, but not at the start. Five 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 with the six on the ground. Yeah, this is new. They've changed. They've changed the unit lineup a little bit down here by Brest Litovsk. I'm sure that they just read some historical reference that said, and said, wait a minute, we don't have that quite right. Now it used to be all of these Fourth Army units were all stacked here right in front of Brest-Litovsk. Um, now they're not. So let's see if they're underneath here. Nope, these are all second panzer. Cool, okay, so it's a little different. Now you gotta clear this out because you gotta get your railway started here. Your railroad unit is right there. So you gotta get this cleared out. Um, gosh, I hadn't, I hadn't, you know, I have the usual way I always do things, but this re-figuring of where the 4th Army was located is throwing me a bit. Now, th these units don't look strong at all. Here's one that maybe is a little strong. We'll go buy anything that we don't want to mess with. Um, I wish I'd... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter what those are. They're going to all be encircled. And I'm trying to figure out, sh should I move north to south or south to north? I'm going to move north to south. Uh, this is the 7 core. 7 core will move back to front. That's just how I do it. You may do something different, and that's fine. Variety is the spice of life. Uh, okay, so our security units are attached to 7 core. We'll rectify that later and put them in a security unit. Um Let's go look at its support units. Um, okay, it's it starts with a lot. It's got infantry. Well, these are the infantry units that 
are under its command. It's got artillery, anti-air, so it's got five different selections of artillery. Uh, the SP artillery down here, which is more like a gun type artillery, like a Stug battalion. Uh, that's just a big motorized gun. Most artillery is, I get that, but a Stug is kind of a almost a hybrid between a tank and a gun. It's not really a tank, um, but it's a bigger gun. Uh, the Jaegers are now considered SP artillery. Okay, engineer construction security. Ah, uh, interesting. Now it's saying that he's got 11 of nine of his command. Oh, okay, so he's got all these three divisions, all four of these divisions. All right, what's the situation here? Uh, this is Eighth Corps. Eighth Corps is under Gustav Felber. He's a 6565. Five. He's okay. Um, let's take this unit and actually give it to Gustav Felber. Is that what I want to do? Eighth Corps. Yeah. Okay. So let's put him in Eighth Corps. How do you do that? You get over here, you click on his headquarters, and you look for 8th Corps. All right, and that gets him, that gets this headquarters. Uh, what did I, who did I say this was? Farm, uh, Fombacher. That gets him under or right on point with his command capability. He's now commanding nine points worth of units. He can command nine points worth of units with no penalty. All right, so we've got that taken care of. He's got plenty of support units uh let's actually let's use that security unit to get rid of the fortified unit okay so that's gone now we can kind of move up and around them uh let's just see what that is let's oh see ya <laughs> they surrendered i was doing that as kind of a probing attack uh let's see if we got another one yep okay those were just little battalions now look we got a huge hole here i was not expecting that we are going to move around. Well, I'll leave him there just to rub up against him. Uh, huh. That was all very interesting. Um, we've got a headquarters, a routed unit. We've already started to get quite a few routed units here in the middle. Word of caution. You don't want to blow them back here so far that you can't encircle them. Uh, so... You know, don't just go in here, you know, just marching and, and hasty attack, hasty attack. At some point, you push them back too far and you can't get your panzers around them. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Kalo says, Stugs were used for pillbox. I always call them Stugs. Are they Stugs or Stugs? I don't know. I call them Stugs. Uh, were used for pillbox busters and direct fire support before getting better gun. Okay. Um... And yes, that is true, Phantom. We're, we're seeing that. There's quite a difference between the units set up. There used to be a very definitive way that you would take Brest-Litovsk. I'm going to have to move 4th Army a little south, uh, further south than I'm used to, to uh, get that accomplished. Um, yes, the one-page guides defender, totally recommended. Those one-page guides, they, they started those with War in the West. They're uh, awesome. They're awesome, especially if you're already familiar with War in the East 1, so that the concepts sort of make sense to you, the big picture makes sense to you. You can look at those, and they give you just a lot of good information. Um, Brit Torrent, yes, our uh, airfields are fixed installations now, which is a lot more realistic, right, than moving a whole airfield 10 kilometers at a time. That always seemed a little strange. Uh, but it was what it was. They were trying to recreate the movement. Now you do that through the AI. We talked a little bit about that before last episode or the episode before that, that now you can actually have your uh, Luftflotte or your Flieger Corps or even down to your, your actual core level air command. You can have them follow specific armies uh, or panzer groups. Uh, that's awesome. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right, let's get here. Okay. Wow, just got a flat out surrender. I didn't even see that unit and they're surrendering to us, which is actually pretty appropriate for the Eastern Front, right? A lot of that kind of weird stuff happened. Um, how 
how far south do I want to shift? That's the question. And also, what am I tacking across here? So let's just click on this unit. It's already had a battle here, so it's going to cost us an extra movement point to get out of that hex. That's a cool addition to this game as well. Um, I kind of want to get rid of this unit and then come around underneath here because these guys are all going to be surrounded no matter what. Let's hit the, 236 to 0, surrendered and shattered. That was about 2,000 men. Okay, let's keep moving him forward. He's on a roll. Now you see the reserve. It's being committed to the defense. I'm glad that the AI is using that more. I find that when you play a human player, a human Soviet player, they use those reserve rules really well. Like a good Soviet player will have a defense set up so that every unit, uh, you know, two or three units will be within six hexes of two or three other units, and they all get committed together, and it's like a patchwork of defense that is very hard to get past. All right, so this is an eight defense. Let's go around him, and I'll have this be kind of our uh, the bottom part of where we're going to go around here and surround these guys. Um, and so let's bring this unit here I'm just thinking for a second I know that you can see the hamster running uh, in my head I think what I'm gonna do now with fourth army speed is not nearly as important they're the cleanup crew the, the you know the panzers are where the speed matters now we can just worry about doing damage here. So let's hit there. That sent him flying. Um, you know, let's. I'm going to back up a little bit. You can start to see what we're going to try to pocket, and we're also going to push everything else we can into that pocket. I'm moving down one. All right, so that routed. Uh, do I go here? I don't think that's necessary. I'm going to go here. I'll hit this armored unit. Now, see, we got a tank division committed to the defense again. So we we actually lost a little bit more than we would have been expecting for a one defensive unit. Uh, that's fine. That's good enough. Now we're going to bring these guys down here. And as if you've watched my other videos, I do every other hex when I'm building these kind of encirclements. Um, I certainly don't want to get out of supply on turn one. <laughs> that would not be good. Uh, they didn't commit anything. Wow, okay. I thought maybe... Oh, wow, that's a 20. That's different. There was never a unit that strong previously. Huh. Huh. Okay, well, instead, I'm going to put this guy right here, then. Okay, we've already severed their ability to use that rail. Now then, let's just uh, just push right through here with this uh, that fortified unit that wasn't very strong. Let's push through here. Now, see, we're going to blow through here, so I'm not worried about, like, these guys getting cut off from supply because once we move the other guys, there's not going to be any chance of that happening. So let's hit here, get rid of that fortified unit. I've gone around the 7, which could be stronger than that, actually, and I suspect is. Um, okay, we scattered that. Let's get rid of that fortified unit. And let's completely clear the way for to Brest here. Uh, does he have any support units? When I say he, 8th Corps, uh, Felber. He's got five. Not really. These are the three divisions underneath him. So let's go look for some support units we may want. Um, I don't want to use these up. We need them for uh, Brest-Litovsk. 
we'll keep that Pioneer Battalion ready to go because we'll need that to assault Brest-Litovsk. Uh, not, a, not a real good selection there. Uh, let's try to do a deliberate attack here and see what happens. Okay, well, we didn't even need that really, uh, but that's okay. Um, now, he'll blow out there. All right, so that routed. And as you can see, I'm just avoiding anything that may slow us down a little bit. There's no need to get crazy. Uh, I'll move him up there. What else is an 8th Corps? This guy's an 8th Corps. Okay, let's bring him down this way. Now, I usually like to have uh, Brest-Litovsk completely surrounded uh, before I attack it. All right, I'm going to leave him there. He can still do a deliberate attack if we need him to assault the city. This guy's also 8th Corps. Um, got some choices here. I could bring this unit up as well. All right, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Um, nobody, oh, this guy is from 8th Corps. Okay, uh, let's, I can't do a, I can't do a deliberate attack with only four left. I could do it with 10. I could do it with the eight. We could double stack here. I guess that's what I'll do. I'll double stack with eighth quarter there. We will move our general, our headquarters, if we can get there. I guess because we haven't entered these hexes yet, we can't get the headquarters through yet. All right, we'll move him in a minute. Um, this is Ninth Corps. Okay, I am going to stack Ninth Corps right here. Ninth Corps. Ninth Corps. All right. Now, generally, like I said, I would have surrounded this in the old game. I'm not sure if that's going to be necessary, and I don't want to overdo it to some degree. Um, you know, only use what you have to, right? And so I want to do an exploratory t attack here and just see, because I need some of these units to get further up here uh, to help build the pocket. Um, I only need like two or three. I think I've got that, but I just want to make sure. Uh, okay, so let's go back to Ninth Corps. Let's right click there. Let's assign support units. Let's get the Pioneer Battalion in there. That will help uh, with the fortification. Might as well put the siege mortars. All right. Is this kind of a siege? Sort of. Um, all right, let's do all of these bad boys. We do get a deliberate attack on it. You see all five divisions ready to assault the fortification. Let's see how that works out. It should knock them back. Well, I say I shouldn't jinx myself like that. Ah, that that'll do it. Uh, 190 to 1. Um, okay, well, they're just gone. Uh, see ya. I could have done that with a lot less. In the old game, you you would have had to have about that much, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Rather safe than sorry. Now let's get these guys up building a pocket, um, and I'll come back and deal with these these two units here in a moment. Um, all right, how's this pocket going to go, or what am I trying to do exactly? Now see, I don't want to keep pushing them. I want to get around them. Um, what am I trying to do? Well, you can see the pocket. I call it a pocket, but you see this lane for the panzers to move through? I want the same thing down here, right through here, okay? And so I'm going to go about building that. Now, you may say, we got a real problem there. Well, we do, but we don't, uh, because I'm going to move this unit up to block that, all right? And its, it's compatriot here um, 
can't move this turn anyway. So, you know, we're not losing any ground. Um, he's perfect for that sort of role. So we're going to do that. Let's get him a little closer. All right, let's start looking at some of these headquarters. Can we get them back here? There we go. All right, let's move that headquarter up here with its units. Um, this headquarters will come stack here, maybe even here. That's fine. These guys aren't going anywhere. Uh, we've got other units that will come up next turn, but they're not going to just go wandering into Poland. Uh, these are all of our hexes. They'd have to go across the marsh. Just don't don't worry about them. We also have this infantry that's part of 2nd Panzer. Um, we'll switch that out from 2nd Panzer. Generally, I do later. But for now, they're, they're infantry units. We'll use them as such. Uh, these are fine. We've got this blocked off. All right, let's take what we have left for movement points for these guys. Let's see how far. Oh, hold on. I've got I've got them all selected. I'm still coming to grips with exactly how to do that. Again, I don't really want these to move. Um, let's keep building this structure. Hold on. Who's he with? He's also with 43rd. Is that what I just moved? No, that's 9 core. Okay, where's 43rd core? That's 9 core. Okay, let's deal with 9 core first. He can't go very far. You know what? I'm going to put him right there just to make sure we're building this lane. Uh, and this unit, where can he get to? Not that far. Sure. I'll just put him there. Uh, where is 9 core? It's right there. Is everybody on side? No. That's fine. I'll put 9 core itself right in. Can I get in here? Oh, you can't you can't get in here yet. Well, that's interesting. That's new in the game, I believe. We knocked the units out of here, but we have not established control of it yet, so I can't go put a headquarters there yet. We actually have to establish control by moving our units into that hex. Uh it was kind of like that in the old game. I don't want to make it sound like that's a dramatic change, but um, it feels a little different to me. Okay, 43rd core, where are you going, boys? All right, let's keep building this structure to drive the panzers through. I guess hopefully they'll uh, scatter this way. Oh, they're not going to scatter at all. Okay, let's make this every other hex. Fine. Okay, they can't get out of that. They cannot squeeze through. We have too much zone of control. Uh, bring him up here. I really don't want to scatter that unit again, but i got to get some of these as far out here to the east as I can to help build this encirclement. We're going to encircle whatever's left here, although just the way we're progressing, I'm not even sure it's going to be that necessary. This is usually one of your bigger pockets of the game, but fine by me. Now then, oh, okay. This is what I was thinking about anyway. I'm going to take this security unit and put it right there. That works, right? Um, this unit's stronger than him, but he shouldn't be able to do much with it. And it, even if they do, they're now into Pol They would then be into Polish territory. I don't think they really want to do that. He's going to stay there. His headquarters here. I'll actually back him off one. That's fine. Uh, I think we move most of Fourth Army. Uh, Fourth Army underneath Gunther von Klug. Von Klug is a good general. Uh, a seven on the ground. He's a nine, a nine morale, eight initiative, eight admin. That will beat a lot of dice rolls. Uh, he's got no need to move. He's fine. He'll move up here eventually, he says, as he moves Von Klug. Uh, okay. Now then, we've got this infantry in second panzer. 
Um, and we got to figure out exactly how we want to do this. I oftentimes, I will say, now I've only got it on normal difficulty. I'm used to playing on very difficult to impossible. And so this just seems a lot easier. Like they're crumbling before us, which did historically happen. I get that. But I mean, I'm moving much further than in the first game, it seems to me. Or having an easier time of it. Maybe that's it. Uh, usually, I use this infantry that's in 2nd pa Panzer Corps, even though that's a motorized unit. Um, I use them to build you know, part of this wall out here that I keep talking about. I don't even know how necessary that is. How far up here can he get? I guess that's about it. Um... He could go here, but why? It's not really gaining us anything. Um, this unit can get... Oh, can get across the river. Excellent. We'll put him up there. And as you can see, I'm extending the wall for this big encirclement. Um, although it's not as big as it used to be. Okay. Oh, shoot. You know what? Hmm. I kind of wish... I kind of wish I would have knocked this out with that infantry unit. But that's okay. That's okay. Actually, I'm not going to stress over that. <laughs> As you guys watch my channel more, if you're new, I, I tend to... to make mountains out of mole hills sometimes uh all right so now that infantry this one's on the way he's like the furthest back he can't get very far as a matter of fact why don't i take him here and try to blow out this unit what is that excellent okay so we routed them yeah there's this area before the marshes now that didn't really used to exist uh, there's more Soviets up here a little further north. Uh, cool. I, like I said, hey, if they're, you know, trying to make the game more accurate, I am all for that. I need to get this guy up here a little further. I'm tempted to rub up against them and scatter them, but I, I think I need to try to keep them up with the rest because the Panzers, you got to move even the infantry as fast as you possibly can. Now that, oh, okay, so these guys... He's attached directly to 2nd Panzer Group. He's with 12th... Wait a minute. Hold on. Get off that. He's with 12th Corps. The hell 12th Corps? Uh, okay. Part of 2nd Panzer Group. That is Schroth. Yeah, this is kind of a new setup then. Uh, Schroth, not that great. Uh, wait a minute. How much did that cost to replace him? I didn't see. 10. 10. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Uh, where is 12th Corps? Where is it buried underneath here? That's not it. That's 47th motorized. That's 24th motorized. I've lost 12th Corps. Uh, 12th Corps? 12th Corps? Well, I guess ultimately you can always go back to the command headquarters and then it will attach to you to the units it commands. There it is. All right, so we've only got him selected. Let's move him out here. Is that far enough? Yeah, those guys are still in command. Yep, okay. Um, it's a weird structure out here. 12th Corps got 6 of 12. Okay, so we're going to put this in 12th Corps. I don't know why it's part of the motorized Corps. Uh, just to keep these straight, I want to put them all in the same core. Where is 12th core? Am I missing it? Motorized. 13th. There it is. 12th core. All right. So he's now being commanded by 12th core. We'll get him out here as far as we can. Actually, we'll have him go right by this unit. So those scatter 
just get them out of the way. You don't want them to reform and maybe come back this way a little bit. So, you know, did we need to do that? Probably not. Uh, we're going over the Dnieper Bug Canal. Um, did I have another? I thought I had another infantry unit out here. 12th Corps, 12th Corps, 12th Corps, 12th Corps. What's the one underneath here? Second Panzer Group. This is the one I wanted to change. Uh, I don't want them directly up to the group. I want it to go to a core first. Gives you an extra chance to beat a dice roll. So always try to get them down to the core level. Divisions I'm talking about. Always try to get them commanded by a core. They can be attached to a higher level unit, but you skip the core level for the dice rolls uh, for passing your command test. When I say dice rolls, I'm talking about command tests. Uh, you pass that. You get one less chance to pass uh, the various checks that the game does. So you might as well put them in cores to the extent you can. <clears throat> when we get into the south, uh, we've got real command problems. Army Group South is commanding way too much. That's why the Germans eventually split that into A and B. Um, oh, Kalo wants some pictures. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Damn, come on, man. Get it together. You're a professional. Uh, okay, I'll give you some unit pictures. Let's go to a core headquarters where we've got some support units. I think we have some in ninth core. Uh, can I look at them here is the question. There's no picture for support. I was hoping they would show us the big artillery guns. Um, for the divisions, they show the logos now. Uh, let's go to a motorized unit. Do they show us a picture or the Panzer Division? No. It is support units you were asking for, right? I thought that they did have pictures for the support units now. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we can come back to that in a minute. Let's uh, finish up here. Uh, moving some of this stuff. I'm just moving back to make sure I'm not forgetting anything or I haven't missed something because this is as new to me as it is to you. So we've got OKL there. I don't see anything back here <clears throat> in Greater Germany or in Poland for that matter. Now we do have the headquarters for Second Army. Its units will pop up on the map next time, I do believe. Um, is this reinforcement schedule? No, info. it's going to be on info, right? Reinforcement schedules? Yes. Next turn, we get uh, all of these infantry divisions. That's nice. Uh, some of them are transfers. Some of them are quote-unquote reinforcement. What are they part of? Does it tell us? Well, it tells us the core. Normally, in the original game, these would be um, part of Second Army. It's not showing me the command. OB West. So that's what the command is now, but it's transferring over from the West. Oh, that's cool. So it's coming out of the theater box in Western Europe because we've told the AI to do that. And so it's automatically gone and picked the ones that should come to the east. Cool, it'll be fun when we do that ourselves too. Uh, but all right, all right. Now I don't see who they're commanded by, but I assume that's second army. Uh, you can see the headquarters back here. He's got nobody to lead. He is a general without an army. Nothing sadder than that. Um, here we've got the security command and Luflata 2, the counter for Luflata 2. When we reset this to uh, not be on hold, we have them all on hold now. Next time I think I'll make them flexible, which means they will move forward with the army or the panzer group that they're supposed to be following. Another really cool mechanic that I like. Uh, let's move the security group headquarters up. Always like to do that. Let's move Army Group Center into Warsaw. That seems a little more realistic to me. Uh, I'm glad you don't have all these damn air counters out here to deal with. Um, 
like I said, it always seemed just very somewhat re unrealistic. Now, what do we have down here? Oh, this is Vi or Vi Viking SS. That's part of Army Group South. But we do have these motorized way down. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and move Second Panzer while we're down here? This these guys in the back will form the bottom part. Gosh, I'm so tempted just to go ahead and make the full entire envelopment because I think we can, and I think we can fairly easily. Now, let me orient myself again um, on Minsk. Minsk is so much further north um, that I think we need to drive further north. If I came here, I could get around them, but I don't think I'm going to have enough units to do an encirclement down here. So I think what I'm going to do instead is drive up this way. Now, I may eventually rub those and, and get them to disperse, but I think I'm going to go this way and try to get around all of this stuff here to the extent we can Let's actually go by, okay, we did disperse them. I'm not sure I, that was great, but uh, that's fine. All right, we'll go here. Now we're gonna need coverage every other hex here so the Soviets don't get out. And actually, I think what I'm gonna do, now that I've brought him all this way, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn him right back around. And can he get there? Oh, of course he can't. Uh, this is this is the hex I want to go to. He can only go there now. Um, all right, I'll come back to him in a moment. Let's take one of the other motorized back here. Okay, this is a weaker unit. Let's um. Let's put him right there. <clears throat> now we already cut the rail here or made it unusable for them. Now we're making this where there's just no way out. Uh, it's too many hexes. It's too bad a terrain. And by keeping every other hex, they can't squeeze through from a command uh, or from a zone of control perspective. Um, okay, now that I've got that there, I can actually move this. here and make this even wider they may try to squeeze out that way but i i don't think they, they would be able to do it quite frankly um all right i'm gonna back him up one and put him there for now uh let's take the cavalry next so i always move motor whoops i always move motorized first or cavalry motorized and cavalry how about that <clears throat> okay he can only get to about there. Gosh darn it. There's five hexes here, and that's what's driving me crazy. I can't do every other one. It doesn't matter whether I sit on the rail line there, but as anybody that's watched me play, it does matter to my brain. Uh, and so... I think what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to move him there. This rubs off that rail to the extent they were going to try to get down it anyway. Um, I'm going to go inside of this guy, which may uh, on the on its surface look a little strange, but... Do I want to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm just wondering if we're going to have enough coverage once we get up here. It's like it's more units now, or it's further. It's further, further to Minsk. Um, I'm going to set him right there. All right. That disrupts that rail. We were going to get there anyway, but let's do that for now. I, I guess we do have enough. We've got four four full motorized out here. So let's see who is actually commanded by who. Who are you with? Who are you with? I don't know. These guys are the 46th motorized. Is that right? 46th motorized. That's their headquarter, headquarters. Who else does he have? Uh, he's got to have somebody else. Who is it? 
Oh, it's this Panzer Division? I don't love that setup, but okay. Um, I'm going to come through here and do this. I think this is the best way to do this. We'll see if that's true. Uh, all right. I'm going to have him hasty attack there. We lost a tank. Oh, no. But they routed. All right. I'm going to put him there. Now I think I can put that headquarters all the way back here. I can stack it with this cavalry even though that's not even part of his core, and everybody's in command. We got to watch. That cavalry might not be quite strong enough. And now we've got a two gap here. I think I'm going to have to do something a little different, but I'm not sure what that is right now. Um, I'm going to put him there, actually. I'm going to Back, back, back. I don't love having him stacked with a cavalry unit, uh, but we're, that's what we're going to do. Um, okay, now what? Well, okay, this is our infantry. Nobody else to move there. Uh, what about uh, this other? There's another. Where's that other headquarters? Okay, these guys are all set up. He's got everything under his command except the cavalry. Who's the cavalry's commander? Bring in the cavalry. Nope, he's connected directly to army group center. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, no, he's not. That's the 24th motor. Well, I want to put him in the 46th motor, I think. So let's switch him over. They. It's great that they don't make you pay for this anymore. 46th motor. Let's put him in there. Okay. So now 46 motor, he's got all of his units out here ready to go. Now then, what are our other two headquarters? There's one of them. There's one of them. Who's your commander? Okay, that's 47th, right? This is 24th. This is 24th. Okay, let's move these guys first. Uh, we're carving up some territory, boys. That's perfect. That's right where I want him. Uh, we'll hit the space bar. There he is. He could even go further if we need him to. I really do need something here so they can't bust through there, but I'm not sure what it is yet. Um... Oh, look at this. Hey, I just found an extra motorized unit. No, I, I guess that's not true. I. Oh, there's an infantry unit. What? Like I said, you've got an abundance of riches when you can't even keep track of a full German division. Um, I don't know. We're just moving these out here as far as we can. I'm going to actually put him, though with that headquarters that's got the ground. Where are they? Here? What is that, 12th Corps? 10 of 12? Yeah, he can take that. We don't want them in motorized cores. Uh, let's put that in 12th Corps. All right, that's done. So now we've got all of the infantry in one corps. Uh, so that is always helpful, at least in my brain. Uh, but also, just from a supply perspective, the Panzers will go, and the motorized divisions will go so fast, they can't keep up. They're always lagging behind. It's hard to keep all the command and control structure correct. So I just always find it easiest to do it this way. I feel like we have an extra motorized unit down here this time uh, than we do in the regular game. So we're almost a Minsk. Uh, I mean, this guy's coming from way back. We've got to make sure, though, that we... What's the best way to do this from a zone of control perspective? Because I'm just terrified they're going to get through there. And you can't have that. Uh... I mean, he could literally move all the way down here 
and just give them German hex after German hex they have to move through. But I'm not sure I like that either. Again, every other hex is what I try to do when I build a pocket. Uh, the finest pockets by this haberdasher. Uh, okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm not sure it's ideal. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think he's got to stay there. But I think I'm going to take one of the Panzer divisions and set it right here. I I, I hate to do that because I think we could go get Minsk almost, but the pocket's more important, really. All right, I'm going to put him right there. It's kind of a waste of, of some movement points, but now we should have that well constructed. We've still got four full Panzer divisions to move, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, he's only doing seven of 12. We'll put the motorized in with him. Uh, 41st motorized. Let's put these guys in the 41st motorized so that we keep our command looking right. 41st motorized. All right. Now that's his commander. That's They're all here now. Uh, he's got all of these. And I'll end up putting this panzer division in one of these cores and have all my panzers together. That's just how I like to do it. Uh, fourth panzer is the furthest south. How far up here can we take him? Well, we can almost take him to the end zone. Um... We almost got to Minsk. This is good. Now, uh, third Panzer will come and meet up here. It's just a matter of how many of these we get trapped, uh, not whether we do it or not. Uh, we'll leave him with some movement points in case we need them for some reason. Um... All right. Now he's there. They both still got movement points. Their headquarters... All right, that all looks good. We'll actually stack him. Why can't I put him there? Why can't I put him there? I want to put him there. Can I get him here? Wow, they've outrun their uh, headquarters. You don't see that often. I don't understand why I can't put him uh, stacked on that unit. Too many movement points to get into a swamp and across the river? I guess. But he cannot get all the way up here. Well, we'll have to deal with that in just a second. Because we definitely... It's because he's coming out of a swamp... And moving across the swamp, uh, I think, is the reason. Oh, by the way, before we do anything else here, let's see. Yeah, now we can go into Brest-Litovsk. That's because we've actually taken full control of the hex. We attacked into it, but we had not moved a unit through it. And so we didn't have, you know, it was like pending control, I think they call it, something like that. Let's move this headquarters up. Don't want to forget that. We'll put uh, Fourth Army headquarters up here right on the edge. Let's go ahead and do rail. So we'll put that in Brest. Uh, it's only one point here. Again, that's a little different. Oh. Hold on. What do we have here? Do we have a movement point? Do we have something that can move? I hope we do. Can he move there? No. Huh. Well, this is what happens when it's a new game to you. The problem I'm seeing here is I've got a triple stack, which in and of itself is not a problem. What is a problem, we need to take that hex so rail can move through here. I guess we're just going to have to... Can he scoot over? No. Can he go there? No. Can anybody there go there? Oh, I see. We could go... That's fine. They can't break through that. Okay, so that takes care of that little problem, but we do need to get out from underneath being triple stacked, so we'll just move him forward one more. Did I just move both of those? Why, why did that happen? Ah! I just want to move the headquarters. I may have to move them again as this railroad unit comes through. Um... All right, so we've repaired that. 
Let's move here. Now we may have actually a different problem. Let's move there. I need to attack here. The reason I need to attack here is the double wide rail goes through here. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to knock them out of here. All right, we're figuring it up, out as we go along. All right, they routed, that's fine. But we want, you see the rail line, the double thick here? We want to go through there, so I had to move him. Um, next we repair here. All right, we're cruising. And he gets right to the end of what he could do. Perfect. So usually I take this unit along, this railroad unit along this line. This time we're going to be taking him straight up this line. It's double rail. Those are the nice ones, the double rail, right? Uh, it's twice as much for them to repair. I'm actually surprised it doesn't cost you more points to repair double rail. Isn't that kind of like, doesn't that make sense a little bit? I think it does. Um, yeah, that's right, Phantom. They can, they can command more. Uh, that Panzer Corps could command 12. And I don't know if that's based on the general themselves, because that's not one of our best. Uh, I think it just matters on the setup at the start of the war, how it was historically. Uh, some of these infantry corps can now command up to nine points, so they can take their usual complement of four divisions, but you can also put a regiment in there if you needed to. Part of that, I know, is because some of these support units, you can convert to brigades actually on the map. Uh, they're called like multi-use, multi-purpose, something like that. Uh, they have a conversion, and you can put them on the map. And those would cost one command point, so you can attach that kind of to one of the cores. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, all right, let's back up for a second, kind of look big picture. You can see Second Panzer stringing its way here through central the Central Soviet Union. Um, this looks good. Every other hex, every other hex. That's how I like to do it. They cannot bust through their general. I'm not saying it would be absolutely impossible, but if you have three or four hexes wide uh, here and you have units in every hex, they just don't have enough movement points to get out, especially if you are doing a lot of interdiction. Uh, they just can't get out. All right, we have two more Panzer divisions to move down here. Which one to move first? Let's move the weaker one first. Gosh darn it, I can almost get all the way around Minsk. Do we know how strong this unit is? Oh, it's only a one, supposedly? Okay. Let's put it right there. And let's try to hasty that and get it out of there. Okay, we lost, we lost one tank, not the end of the world. Okay, now he's around the back. Can we get the other one directly back there, and then we'll try to take something from third panzer? I don't think we can. Ah, ah it's all right. It's all right. I think I'm going to bring him a little bit this way, and there's a method to that madness. He is going to try to come here and help them get out if they can. I'd rather just knock him out. Eh, it cost us five tanks. I'm not sure if I wanted to help out that much. Um, eh, that's all right. Still early. It'll be interesting to see if we can get third panzer around the back here. It's very hard to do in the original game to completely encircle Minsk. Uh, okay, I guess I'm going to put him right there. Now then, let's go get their headquarters. Gosh darn, they can't even get here. It's crazy when you're outrunning your headquarters units. That was not a problem in the original game. Um, I can put him here. 
Oh, let's stack him there. I think that's within five of both. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's good. Now, their headquarters is all the way back here. Oh, this is the one that I was like, ah, crap. Well, if nothing else, we can transfer these guys over to this headquarters. Um, now, there is an automation function in this game. Where is it? Where is it? Let's go find it. It's a selection that you can make that will tell the AI to link up your divisions to the closest headquarters. It's it's a I think the reason they put it in is to make it a defense against you inadvertently leaving something out of command. You know, it's six hexes away instead of five. You know, it's 16 instead of 15. What the game will go about looking for the closest headquarters and reassign it. Where is that? Is that? Yes. Auto assign units to the nearest applicable headquarters. So of course it's only going to do motorized units to motorized headquarters. I believe. Uh, I believe that's the way it works. Um, okay. So this unit's not going to be able to get out here, but because the way the game works now, that's okay because it's not gonna cost us anything to do it the way I'm gonna do it. So let's go put the headquarters here. Now then, he you know, is commanding all of those. No, he's not. They're all gonna be put in the 47th motorized core for this turn. Uh, we can always switch them back. It's just, it's not costing us anything. So we may as well have him command and he's got 12 command points. Uh, so we're gonna put all of these up here in the 47th. All right, now then, so 47th, let's put him, right, okay, let's put him in the 47th. And <clears throat> 47th, he's still down here, let's put him in the 47th. All right, so all of these units up here are now be co being commanded by this headquarters, and we'll take all the motorized here. Well, it could be in either one, right? He's got now these three or four. Uh, 24th doesn't have much left in it now. Schweppenberg. Schweppenberg's okay. Who is our core commander here? That's uh, Lemelson. Lemelson's okay. He's, he's a six. He's just like a straight up six. Um, so that's Lemel. We should actually get to know this because it could make a difference who we assign things to. So let's look at Von Schweppenberg. Oh, well, he's all sixes and a seven. He's better than Lemelson. I don't think that's how it used to be, but okay. Uh, who do we have here? This is Von Vettengoff. He's 7667. Okay, so Lemelson, the guy that's out front here, is actually our worst. But believe me, when you're dealing with all sixes, that ain't bad. Um, oh, who's the other one up here? This is uh, the guy that's the head of the infantry. This is Schroth. Did we look at him? 5665. Five. Okay, we'll want to get rid of him eventually. Uh, but th those guys are all going to be put in the fourth army anyway. Then we get back here to second panzer group and Hans Guderian. Guderian's a seven, nine, eight, nine on the mech. Nine on the mech. Nine. <laughs> I just keep saying it. I'll stack him up here with fourth army. They can, uh, you know, those guys can all go get coffee together or something. Um, security units there. 53rd Corps there, Army Group North there. We've got a fixed unit that's part of this corps there. We've got the Luflata. How do you like that, Stanley? I think that sounded pretty damn good. I've got the railroad unit uh, stacked. That's not always ideal, but that's okay. Uh, we should be fine. We've got the second Panzer running like a like Usain Bolt through this thing. Um all right, I think I'm going to leave it right there for this one. I'm going to come back later, 
give me a couple hours. Got to go take a walk. Uh, as I say, I got an eight pound Yorkshire Terrier that's tougher than all of you combined. Uh, if she doesn't get her, her walk, she gets real nasty. And so <laughs> not as crazy as she gets around the grill. Let me, let me tell you that. But anyway, I'm going to go for a walk, uh, with the family, clear my head. Now this is all going well. Uh, this game's great. I'm really enjoying the hell out of it. Uh, I can't wait. Honestly, I was thinking earlier, I can't wait till we start turn two because I want to get back in there. <clears throat> with the air war that's why i was thinking tonight even making a tutorial that was just about the air war because i know that that's what's going to confuse people and i don't want anybody to pick up this great game and then say hell with it i'm not going to deal with that air i don't understand it we will get it we will get it um we'll figure it out uh anyway thank you guys so much great comments as always you guys are the best uh, you add a lot to the channel, and I really do appreciate that. Whether historical knowledge, game knowledge, or life knowledge, whatever the case may be. Thank you guys so much. Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll see you next time.